actually here, we have 1,400 shares that companies buying back. And here it tells you par value is a dollar, the cost is five dollars. So we'll be using which dollar? We're using the five dollars to journalize this entry. Okay, buying back the stock is different from the original issuance. Original issuance would be fair market price, would be par value. We'll figure out the differences in excess of par. But if it comes to buying back the stock, which is recording everything based on the original, the cost that we're actually $7,000 to buy back this originally outstanding stock. So you have treasury stock balance, debit, $7,000. The $7,000 debit balance, again, is a deduction for the entire equity session. We have a second entry here. If we resell a portion, 400 shares, back to the market at the price $8, and we would compare $8 against $5 originally, the price that we used to purchase. So we have three dollars differences times 400 shares that will give us paid in capital from treasury stock transactions. Credit side is the premium. So for each share, they originally purchased by five dollars, they now reselling back to the market at eight dollars. Three dollars differences times uh, 400 shares gives you 1,200 for the premium to this account. So if we post all these transactions, these two transactions, into their specific T accounts, and if you look at Treasury stock balance, you would see $7,000 under the debit balance side, and then a deduction $2,000. Okay, because we purchase it back, and then we resell a portion to it. So we have just 5,000 outstanding, 5,000 in Treasury stock that company is still withheld in the business, and again, it's a deduction toward the entire equity account. So this, if we represent this under balance sheet, you would see a bracket around this number. The upper part, you would see retain earnings, and then the first section, you see paid in capital. This part here is the deduction, so you have a bracket around it. 